Welcome to lecture 36. In this lecture, I'll talk about the age of the universe. We called it in lecture 35 to find the Friedman equations for cosmology. If we employ the shortened notation, h of t being the ratio of the time derivative of a with respect to a, these are given by the following two equations, where we have, in addition to a, also the derivatives of the energy density epsilon and the pressure. These equations describe the dynamics of a space-time that is given by the FLRW metric, which is written in the line element form over here, where kappa takes the, param the parameter kappa takes the values minus one, zero, or one. In this lecture, I want to explore solutions to these equations of motions that describe an expanding universe. To get started, I want to talk about the scale factor. If we look at the FLRW metric again, and if we, for the moment, suppose that space is flat, so that kappa is equal to zero, we can calculate the distance between two points that are um, at the same time unit, so dt is zero, from the line element. And this is given as the distance delta x squared is equal to a squared times dr squared plus r squared d omega squared. We take the root out of this, and we also say that we want to consider fixed angles, so d omega is zero, then the distance between two points delta x is equal to the distance delta r times a of t. And this means that the distance between two points is proportional to this factor a of t. For this reason, we call a of t the scale factor of the universe. So the larger a of t, the larger the universe is, and the smaller a of t, the smaller the universe. Let's now talk about the Taylor expansion of the scale factor around some time t naught. If we rewrite a of t as a of t minus t naught plus t naught, we can Taylor expand for small t minus t naught. And um, if we ignore all derivatives, then this is just equal to a of t naught. The first correction term is t minus t naught times the first derivative, which I denote as a dot. There's a second derivative term, t minus t naught squared over two, and there are lots of other terms. If we divide this equation by a of t naught, which we assume to be non-zero, and we arrange the signs, we find the following equation. The ratio a of t by a of t naught is equal to one minus the linear term, minus the quadratic term, and so on and so forth. We said that we have this function a, h of t, which is defined as the ratio of a dot over a. And this is precisely this ratio that appears here evaluated at t naught. So we define h of um, or h at time t naught as h naught. And we call this uh, coefficient the Hubble constant because it is a constant. If we further also denote the second derivative by a specific parameter, and we uh, introduce the second um, derivative appearing in this way, being parameterized by q naught. And we call q naught the deceleration parameter. We have um, both the linear and the quadratic term of the Taylor expansion uh, captured by these two parameters. So in terms of these two parameters, we then have just the ratio a of t over t naught is given as one minus t naught minus t h naught and a second, a second quadratic term um, that comes in with the deceleration parameter. What do these mean? Well, if we uh, now suppose that t naught denotes our time today, so that t, which is then taken to be smaller than t naught, is somewhere in the past of our universe, then this expansion says that if t um, is very close to t naught, then a of t divided by a of t naught is approximately 1. But if we go back in time, uh, we can correct for this by including the linear term that comes in with the difference t naught minus t and the Hubble parameter, such that if um, t is smaller than t naught, um, then this here is a positive number. So we subtract something from a t over a t naught. So that means the ratio a of t over t naught for times that are in the past is smaller than one. This just means that the scale factor of the universe uh, was smaller um, 
it at earlier times. Of course, we also have a correction parameter to this, uh, which comes sorry, which comes with this Q naught parameter here, which tells us then um, how much the universe has been decelerating over time. We can um, get some approximate um, ideas of the age of the universe from this. In particular, if we just um, ignore the acceleration parameter for now, we um, just include the linear term is till the expansion, then we get for this ratio just one minus t naught minus t h naught. If we then say we want to put the beginning of the universe at time t is zero, and we define the beginning of the universe by that point where the scale parameter a of t0 is equal to zero, we find that the uh, corresponding um, approximation leads us to the following equation, namely that zero is uh, one minus t0 h naught, or t0 is just one over h naught. Since t0 is the time today, this means that the age of the universe today is given as the inverse of the Hubble parameter. This uh, approximation of this time is also known as the Hubble time. We can use observational data to constrain the value of uh, the Hubble constant. It is customary to express it in, from, in terms of these units, namely uh, kilomet kilometers per second over megaparsecs. And h is just a numerical factor that is of order one. Historically, um, people thought that h was very close to one. Now, uh, newer data sort of suggests that h is closer to 0 0.7. But for now, let me just stick with this estimate of h uh, on the order of one, because um, it um, sort of brings to mind a, a, a puzzle that has plagued cosmology uh, for a long time before uh, precision data became available. Specifically, if you plug in uh, this value of the Hubble constant, we find for the Hubble time or the age of the universe, 10 to the minus two megaparsecs per kilometer second. We can convert megaparsecs to um, kilometers. And uh, if we do that, then uh, we get a nuns in seconds, which we then can convert into years. So we find a T naught um, from this Hubble constant that is given as uh, 9.78 giga years, so 10 to the nine years divided by this little h. So if h is actually one, this means that the age of the universe would be about 10 billion years. And that was uh, plaguing cosmologists for a long time because they had known from astronomers that there are some stars in the Milky Way, uh, so-called metal poor stars, that um, are much older than uh, 10 billion years. They are uh, about 15 billion years plus minus 4 billion years old. And of course, you can't have stars in the universe if the, uh, that, that are older than the age of the universe itself. So for age equal one, this uh, was known as the age problem uh, that um, puzzled cosmologists for a time. Nowadays, we have um, values of age that are uh, closer to 0 0.7, which uh, ameliorates this um, H problem um, because it sort of reconciles the age of the universe with the age of known stars. And this concludes the present lecture.